welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, today I'm taking you back to the Plantagenet period. But on this day in history, the 27th of September 1442, in the reign of King Henry VI, John de la Pole, second Duke of Suffolk, was born. Now, why am I taking you back to the Plantagenet period? Uh, you may be wondering that. That's uh, quite, quite a long time before Henry VII came to the throne. Well, that's because this man had plenty to do with the Tudor dynasty. So let me give you some facts about him. John de la Pole was the son of William de la Pole, first Duke of Suffolk, and his wife Alice Chaucer. In 1449, when he was just a small boy, John married his distant cousin, Margaret Beaufort, a name you'll know from the Tudor period. She was, of course, the future mother of King Henry VII. John's father, William, was for a time the main power behind King Henry VI, but he was brought down by his enemies and impeached by the commons. Henry VI intervened, sending the Duke into exile, but his ship was intercepted and he was given a mock trial and beheaded. John inherited his title, but his father's offices were taken by the crown and John became a ward of the crown. In 1453, John's marriage to Margaret Beaufort was annulled by King Henry VI, who made Margaret a ward of his half-brother Edmund Tudor, and she went on to marry Edmund Tudor in 1455. In 1458, John married Elizabeth, daughter of Richard of York and Cecily Neville. She was the sister of the future Edward IV and Richard III. This obviously allied John with the Yorkists, and he ended up being degraded from Duke of Suffolk to Earl of Suffolk in 1459, when the Duke of York was attainted and driven into exile. John fought on the Yorkist side at the battles of St Albans and Towton in 1461 and acted as steward of England at his brother-in-law Edward IV's coronation. In 1463, a few months before he reached maturity, John came into his lands and in 1465 he was granted an annuity by the king. In 1467, his eldest son, also called John, was made Earl of Lincoln. John fought on Edward IV's side at the battles of Barnet and Tewkesbury in 1471, and his rewards included being made High Steward of Oxford University, a Knight of the Garter, and Lieutenant of Ireland. In 1475, John served Edward IV in France, and in 1476, his mother Alice died, and he took possession of some of her dower estates. King Edward IV died suddenly in 1483, and John carried the royal scepter at Richard III's coronation after Edward V had been ruled illegitimate. Following Richard III's son's death, John's son, the Earl of Lincoln, was made president of the Council of the North in his place and may even have been considered Richard's heir. However, John lost his office of Constable of Wallingford to Francis Viscount Lovell. In 1485, Henry Tudor, son of Lady Margaret Beaufort, returned from exile and fought King Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth. John didn't fight at the battle, but his son, Lincoln, fought on Richard III's side. Richard was, of course, killed, and Henry became King Henry VII. John and his son did not suffer for their links with Richard, and John was even reappointed as Constable of Wallingford in place of Lovell, who was attainted after Bosworth. John acted as a trier at the new king's first parliament, but in 1487 his son Lincoln rebelled against King Henry VII, supporting pretender Lambert Simnel, who claimed to be Edward, Earl of Warwick. Lincoln was subsequently killed at the Battle of Stoke Field. Fortunately for John, he managed to keep the trust of the king, acting as trier at the next parliament and mustering for the king's expedition to Brittany. He did lose his Wallingford office, though. John died in May 1492 and was buried in the college he'd founded at Wingfield in Suffolk. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. 
you can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and give me a like and leave me a comment. And do check out the description for this video as well because you'll find another link to last year's On This Day in Tudor History. So you always get two for the price of one. Lots of Tudor history to enjoy. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.